Yeah, what I did is got together with Window World and being the 100th anniversary of the Indianapolis 500, we decided that it would be kind of cool to go a little bit retro. And we chose three different cars, one of which was the 82 winning car, and, and put it up in front of the owners. So um, courtesy of Andretti Autosport Design Department, they, they came up with these schemes. And, um, and this was hands down the winner. And I think in a lot of ways it was because it says Richard Petty, it goes with a winning car, it's also something that a scheme that we've had for several years and we even went with the the outline of the 43 to give that little bit of the look of you know the STP and all that as well with it because it, it just to us it was it was something that we wanted to make people remember the past because um, it's easy sometimes it's easier a little bit easier to forget it's not easy to forget here because there's so much history but but anyway it was something that we thought would be a lot of fun well, everybody's got to remember the end. It was a, it was a battle to the finish. And, um, you know, we hope we can repeat what Gordon did, but, um, and maybe not have to do it in such a, you know, a high, heart thro throbbing. I, I know the fans love it, would love it, but um, it was, I believe, the closest finish at that time of the Indianapolis 500. And he and Rick Mears were, were battling tooth and nail, and, and Gordon came out on top. Yeah, what we did is for the month of April, you could enter a contest called the Win Win with Window World um, and Ability Magazine. And you got the opportunity to become a semifinalist in five different regions. And we also have a special military um, selection. And so there's basically six semifinalists that are gonna come to Indianapolis. They're gonna get the all expense paid trip to, and, and a lot of parties, a lot of fun, a lot of different things. And at the Andretti Autosport pre-race party, the night before the Indianapolis 500, we will select the finalists and if I win the Indianapolis 500, that finalist wins a million dollars. I mean, you, you look around and you, of course I see my uncle's car and, and um, you know, it sends chills up your, and then you, you just see the other history. I mean, I was here at the racetrack for a lot of these wins and, um, you know, having family in the race and, and of course um, the Andretti history here is, is a bit important to us. And uh, we'd like to get another one in this group of cars uh, maybe this year Marco and I can pull one off for Michael and, and get over here, but it, it's, it's astounding and I mean just to look back at some of the older cars and we were talking about it the other day and we said, um, I wonder what people are going to say 10 years from now when they walk up and, and they look at the cars we were driving, are they going to say, you know, these guys were crazy, you know, why would they drive that? You know, because that's the way we look at those, but that's what, that's what they knew and that's what they did. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, you see this car and you see a rolling victory lane, they show so much footage of it and you see Andy grabbing uh, my uncle Mario and giving him a big smooch and uh, I think that's the only time my uncle would ever let, you know, Andy, <laughs> Andy do something like that obviously, but you know, it was a really actually a, a difficult month for my uncle. I mean, had the, the failure on the primary car and then went to the backup car and, and qualified it and I don't think they even thought that it was going to run, you know, 20 or 30 laps and ran the whole 500 miles and and then you think of all the other times that he would would have should have could have won and easily had the lead and and it didn't so i mean i think i think that says a lot about this car and and the history of it and this is the first time i've ever been this close to it. we had a family photo last year and i got to stand kind of over on that side of the family photo um but i love it this is um this is what it's all about for us um there, you know, there's so many different things that go with it. My son is starting to race now and he's starting to, to feel a little bit of that. And what it is is um, people treat you sometimes a little bit differently uh, on the racetrack and because it's, it's important to say that, you know, whether they beat you or not. And, and I think that also people prejudge whether you, you should be winning or not. But I think in the overall thing, of, you know, if you look at the, the big picture and the scope of it all, uh, I've always told them you just have to be proud of what our family's been able to accomplish. We're very fortunate to do what we love to do and, uh, and make a decent living at it and just have a great time and, and I guess um, you know to, to follow in the short period of time really the Andretti's, have, this, we're only on our third generation and hopefully it goes for a lot longer. Oh absolutely, I mean the car that was just before this, that the primary car was actually a four-wheel drive car and so at that time there was so much evolution going on in the sport and people were trying different things. You see like a, a little half wing here and, and the little winglets on the back and, 
and I, I think there was just a lot of experimenting going on on, on what to do to, to make the cars go faster. And, and of course, it all started with the, the rear engine with the Lotus and Jimmy Clark. But, um, you know, you, you just see the evolution as it's come along. Now, like you said, you can always pick the pieces off of this that we're still using today. This is my uncle's car, but I also relate it um, in, a, in a different way to another Indy 500 winner. 